He lost $100 billion worth of Bitcoin to protect freedom of speech. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Idi. Good morning, this beautiful Monday morning. In today's video, two amazing news items, a tip, of course, also looking at the charts, what is Bitcoin doing, uh, what was the weekly close, and where are we going to go this week? Are we going to break 70K, yes or no? Uh, and of course, also the inspirational quote at the end. Yes, I have a little bit of a cold, so you can hear my voice a little bit different. It's not AI, it's just me having a cold. Now, let's quickly jump into the news first before we go into the Bitcoin charts. Bam. The first news item is about Russia. Guys, the G7, so that's the top of the world, they froze Russian money. So they froze a lot of Russian assets when the war started. Now, what they are doing is, they're using that frozen Russian money that they just took, confiscated from the Russian government, they are taking that money and giving it to the Ukraine. Now, that is exactly an example of what banks are able to do, and especially central banks. And no, I'm not going to say, yes, I'm from Russia or from Ukraine. I don't care. I don't want wars. But the fact that a central bank, that the top of the world can say, hey, let's freeze that country's money and then take that money and even give it. It's not freezing anymore. It's like confiscating and never giving it back because you're going to give it to somebody else because you like him more. Whatever it is that makes you like him more, maybe it's the oil in the ground or maybe it's the situation where it's placed because of the uh, border between the EU, etc. Like, doesn't matter what the reason is that you like that country or that person more. It is all about that there is a centralized entity, central banks, that can apparently freeze someone's money, just not only freeze it, but confiscate it and give it to someone else. That is the world of banks. That is the world a lot of people still want to live in, and that is exactly the world I don't want to live in anymore. We as people need full control on our money. As long you keep using their money, they will be in control. The moment we all collectively start to use our money, Bitcoin, we will turn into control. And these kind of strange things, if you're for or against, it doesn't matter, but these strange things, like confiscating your money because they think you did something wrong, can't happen again if we all collectively build back better on Bitcoin, guys. So that was the first news item. Now I have a second news item that is also a really cool one because I opened the video with, hey, he lost 100 billion US dollar. And of course, if you calculate, Elon Musk bought Twitter for 44 billion US dollar almost two years ago. Two years ago, he paid $44 billion. Do you still know that picture where he came in with this sink into the Twitter head office, like let that sink in? Now let this sink in. If he would have bought Bitcoin two years ago for $44 billion, that would now be worth $144 billion US dollar. So he kind of gave up $100 billion of profit he could have made with Bitcoin to protect freedom of speech. Thank you, Elon, for doing that. Because yes, X or Twitter, however you call it, is still the only platform we have full freedom of speech. So yes, he might have a little bit less profit. <laughs> the guy is already filthy rich. Uh, but still, he gave up that profit to protect freedom of speech by acquiring Twitter and keeping it free. Amazing, isn't it? But that's also showing you how much profit you could have made if you bought Bitcoin two years ago. And now people will say, ah, so we are too late. No, in two years time or in 12 months time to be exactly, the stories again will be the same. If you would have bought, you could have tripled it. I told you 12 months ago, you should buy and you were like, yeah, maybe it's too late. And then in 12 months, you doubled or tripled your money again. And then we sell and then we buy back in the bear market bottom. And then you will say the same. Nah, I'm too late. Bitcoin is crashing. It's over. It's never over. We do this four year cycle again, then we go up. So you should be buying that bear market bottom again. So two really cool news items. I kind of have a third news item, but I will consider this more as a crypto tip. The crypto tip for today is how to protect your Bitcoins from being confiscated by 
Dutch governments, banks, central banks or tax companies. And I'm saying Dutch, but it means like European, like German or French or whatever country you're living in. It's very simple. I just read an article that now the Dutch tax company, they want complete insight in all the Dutch citizens' data on exchanges. So they want to know from all the exchanges that operate in the Netherlands, hey, how much Bitcoin, Ethereum, Shiba Inu, Chainlink, Solana, whatever currency it is, is he holding on your exchange? And when did he buy it, at which price, and how much profit did he make? And then when they have full insights in this data, probably get access to that data, they will calculate exactly how much tax you will need to pay in the Netherlands on your crypto profits or your crypto holdings. And yes, in the Netherlands at the moment, they don't pay tax on profits yet. At the moment, you only pay tax on your capital. Let's say capital gain tax, something like that, like for Morgan's blasting. But who says they won't change this in the future? If I analyze the Dutch government, what they have been doing in the last couple of decades, they will be changing that in the future because they only have one task. And that one task that the Dutch government has is keeping you poor as fuck. And how to keep you poor as fuck? To even if you're a good trader and you make shitloads of profits in something that you love to do, trading crypto, they will go and tax you. And if it will be 30% or 40% or 50%, we don't know, but it will be a way for them to stop you from becoming rich in the Netherlands. And that counts for all these European countries that love that whole 2030 plan, guys. You can't become rich. That's how simple it is. That's why tax was invented. To keep you poor, to keep you listening, to keep you obeying, to keep you dumb as fuck. Now, for all those countries that have uh, experienced these issues, there is a solution. You can trade on a decentralized exchange. The best one by far, the safest one, also liquidity-wise, but everything else, is Apex Pro. I've been talking about this exchange and telling you about it and educating you about it already for two years. Two years, up and running. How does this work? It's very simple. If you have a wallet, like for example a MetaMask, or for example a hardware wallet, a ledger, or a software wallet, a trust wallet on your telephone, nobody knows that you own or hold these wallets with all the assets on this. The moment you send those assets from here to an exchange where you're registered, KYC, that is the moment you show the Dutch government, hey, I'm holding 10 bitcoins. And that's when the government will see it. They will get access to that data. If you would be connecting this wallet to a decentralized exchange, not sending your bitcoins there, but just connecting your wallet with that exchange to be able to trade there on the same way you're trading on Bybit or Binance or whatever exchange you're using, the experience you have now of using decentralized exchanges is almost exactly the same as the centralized exchanges. So when you connect your wallet, you will be able to trade your Bitcoins, to trade your Ethereum, to swap your Ethereum, to even trade with leverage, without the need of you sending your crypto from your wallet to that exchange. You will be trading from your own wallet. If this decentralized exchange might collapse, bam, gone, you still have full control on your Bitcoins and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies in your wallet. They never left your wallet. You're connecting your wallet to that decentralized exchange, trading there. Now, the most positive part is that if this wallet is anonymous, the decentralized exchange is also anonymous because you're not registered there with your full normal name, just a wallet, not even an email address if you want, you just connect a wallet, then you will be able to trade on this exchange just like you've been trading all the time, exchanging to USDT or buying tokens, whatever it is, with USDT, and nobody knows it's you. And nobody knows it's you. This exchange, these central exchanges, untouchable by the government. And even if the governments would touch them, they still don't know who's the owner of the wallet that's connected to that exchange. So if you want to do it that way, then you just go down below, click the link to Apex Pro, just sign up there, claim your bonus, connect your wallet, and just try it out. It's not that difficult. I have also a course for this. The course is now accessible for all the VIPs, but I will also set that course free 
for all of you guys so that you understand how to do it in a very simple way. And for all those people that now say, ah, that's illegal, you don't want to pay tax, you avoid paying tax. No, nothing illegal. It's completely legal. You are allowed to have your funds in your own wallet, custodial service yourself, be your own bank, and you're allowed to trade it. That they can't see it or can't tax it, that's their fault. They should update their knowledge or they should update whatever it is they do, or they should change the complete tax system because, ah, let's be honest, we're paying way too much tax in the Netherlands. Yes, maybe 50% on your income, 20% on the groceries, so 71% is already gone and you didn't do shit. So, not the best system if you ask me. And on top of that, you pay capital gain tax. And on top of that, when you die, your kids pay it again, inheritance tax. So yeah, I don't agree with it. So yes, if you can legally avoid paying tax, legally avoid, that's the important word, then I am for legally avoiding paying tax especially on your skills. Now, let's jump into the next part of the video, the charts. The first chart for today, guys. Yes, the four hour chart again. Amazing pattern that we can see at the moment. Uh, we can even see the build up of a W. If you look like here, go down, go up, go down, we go up. So if we would break that uh, neckline over there of that W, pattern then of course the target would be from here let's say to there which is like around yeah ah, perfectly exactly the 72 k uh, that huge area of resistance that i see over there guys that is what i see this should be the target 72,205, which will be the resistance so we are building up to make that move at the moment again bitcoin pulling up two times wicking into the yellow support zone over there uh, 67,500. I believe that if this turns into a double unit four hour, we could break out easily to the 72K level. That resistance level will be a big resistance level because if you look to the left, you can see exactly why it's going to be a big resistance level. You can see all those green circles around that line. That was every time when we hit the level fell down. So that's going to be resistance. If we break that new all time high very soon. Now, if we look at the weekly chart, we can see that exactly that candle is playing out like I told you it would play out. A large wick to the bottom, a large wick to the bottom. We have a very large wick in this candle to the bottom. Uh, we have a tiny wick on top. A small body could have been thinner, that would be even more bullish. But still, this is a bullish candle from here. We move on further. We will keep support probably on that green line with this weekly candle. It's going to close in six days and two hours. Probably make it a little bit higher candle to that 72k level over there. Um, and that's where we find resistance. If we break that level over there, yes, we could even wake to a new autumn high uh, in this next weekly candle. But let's see. This is an important week now ahead. We need to keep support over there and we need to make a bullish move as this all looks bullish. Three green bars. Every bar is bigger than its previous bar. RSI not topping out yet. So yes, a lot of upward movement still possible. Now, then we jump into a few other amazing charts. The first one being this one. Um, this one is a very important chart. Uh, it's a table. It shows you who are the top hodlers on Bitcoin at the moment. Yes, Coinbase, 2.2 million Bitcoin. And of course, that's also including the BlackRock and the MicroStrategy Bitcoins because they choose Coinbase as a custodial service. Now, Satoshi, 968,000 Bitcoins. So Binance still has a shitload of Bitcoins. And then we get BlackRock, MicroStrategy, Grayscale still in the game. 224,751 uh, Bitcoins. The US government's 213,000 Bitcoins. Bitfinex 207,000 and then OKX 195 and Kraken still with 190,000 Bitcoin. So these are the top 10 centralized entities that uh, at the moment are holding Bitcoins for their clients. Not Satoshi, he's holding Bitcoin for himself. Not Grayscale, they're holding Bitcoin for themselves. Not the government, they're also holding Bitcoin for themselves. But the rest are all custodial services for their clients that hold Bitcoin. Now, that is not the best way to hold your Bitcoin at a custodial service, but that's an entirely other discussion. I'm not going to go into it in this video because then the video becomes too long, but it's the best to hold your Bitcoins in self-custody. Be your own bank. Of course, we all know that. Now, then we go to a chart. I found this one on Twitter and I found it really remarkable. I didn't fact 
check this chart yet. Let that be clear. I did not fact check this chart yet. I want to fact check it. I don't have time this morning, but you can fact check it. If you fact check it for me, yes, I will be giving away a t-shirt to the one that uh, does the fact checking and produces the same chart and shows me that it's true. Okay, a Bitcoin t-shirt, you can choose it for yourself in, your, in the shop. But this chart is showing us that if Bitcoin's entire history uh, on the weekly closes, if we close above the 0 0.75 log FIP fan, it does not close below it ever again. So here, this is the FIP fan. If we close above that line, like we did over there, we, won't, we didn't go down below it. Here, another example, the Fibonacci fan. If we go above it, we don't go below it. And we just closed above another FIP fan. So that means that this could be not going down below that level of 65K-ish, where the FIP fan 0.75 is. Let me know in the comments if you have the skills to check this chart, also for the bull market in 2017. Just check it and let me know if it is true. Because if that's true, then we have a confirmation that soon Bitcoin is really, really, really going to take off. Then we have, of course, the important chart, the Plan B stock to flow chart. This chart is showing us that, yes, Bitcoin is really ready to take off. We have been onto this bottom area now for a very long time. Look, normally we spend less time over there, only a couple of months. Here as well, four or five months. At the moment, it's already eight months. Red dots normally start to increase. Red dots normally start to increase. These red dots are slowly increasing, but need to increase a little bit more the next 12 months, all the way above 100K. 120k, 160k, or if it's going to be 500k, what a lot of people say, that's the gray line. I don't care. They just need to go move up. And then they will turn into orange and yellow, and that's the moment we will take our profits again. And we will be buying back that bear market bottom in 2026, 27, around that level of 60k again, guys. That is the important thing in this chart. We are here, just like we were there there just like we were there over there. And just look to the top where we were if we were at that moment over there. We were exactly where we are now, just before a massive explosive run of 12 months bull market. Don't be fooled. It's not gonna drop off here to the bottom. It's gonna be a 12 month full blown bull market. That were the charts for today. I hope you really enjoyed the charts. Yes, zooming out. Also that plan B chart again, amazing chart. Bitcoin is ready to take off, guys. You see those red dots? They're gonna go up. They're gonna go up. Don't, don't be fooled. They're not gonna fall down. The chart is not like gonna change, like boom. It's gonna go up. It's just gonna go up. The, the, all the capital that you invest today, in my honest opinion, will at least double in the next 12 months at least double from 60 to 120. Maybe we go to 160 or 180, so that's like times 2.5 or maybe times three your capital, but at least it will double at the moment. So for me, people that all DMing me, should I still buy Bitcoin, it's already so expensive? Yes, it is expensive. Yes, it's 70K almost. It will be doubling at least, I believe, in the next 12 months. And then you can cash out, take your profits, and then you have one Bitcoin free to play again all of your life. And maybe just hold it. Maybe hold it till it's $1 million or $10 million per Bitcoin, like in 20 years time. All of that is in the possibilities. But if you want to play the midterm, let's say it's not too zoomed out range, buy now, sell around the top, buy back around the bottom, sell around the top, buy back around the bottom, do this a couple of times and you're finished for life, financially at least. At least if they don't create even more inflation, because I also read that the inflation rates in, I think, Europe or the Netherlands are now the highest, and it's going to increase again with 7%. So yes, congratulations, your groceries are going to be 7% more expensive. Um, the beautiful part is, if you would be in Bitcoin, you don't give a fuck, because Bitcoin already increased with 7% in the last couple of days. So yeah, it will be outperforming fiat shitcoins, and by that also inflation, and by that you protect your capital against inflation. Another reason to buy Bitcoin. Amazing charts again. Let's jump into the last part, the inspirational quote. The inspirational quote has to do with uh, many facets in life, but also with Bitcoin. Because people are always like, ah, 
I can't afford a full Bitcoin. You don't need to afford a full Bitcoin. You can also buy like 0.0015 Bitcoin. That's like $10 worth of Bitcoin. You don't need to buy one Bitcoin fully for 70K. You can also buy a piece of Bitcoin. And you could even buy a piece of Bitcoin every day or every week. Dollar cost average. So you keep buying Bitcoin. Small steps. But people always underestimate the power of small steps. And they shouldn't be doing it. If you walk 10,000 steps a day, that would be 70 marathons a year. If you buy 0.0015 Bitcoin a day, $10 a Bitcoin a day, that would in the end be 0.05 Bitcoin a year. Around three and a half thousand dollar worth. And if Bitcoin increases in price, it would be even more. If you read like 20 pages per day, that would be like 30 books per year. You must never underestimate the power of small steps. Everything in life starts with that first small step. Even your life, when you start to walk, it is the first small step. Probably you fell, but it was the first step. And by taking these baby steps or incubating these baby steps into your life, you will slowly grow bigger. And that also counts for capital. You can't get rich overnight. Some people are lucky. Some people bought Shiba Inu. Some people bought another pump and dump coin that went shit high and that beautiful made people rich. But that's not everyone. That's like 1%, maybe 0.1% of the people. For all those other people, it is just very important that you take very small steps and starting to protect your capital against inflation, against control, full control by other people. You should be starting to buy Bitcoin step by step, bit by bit. If you can afford $10 per week, start to buy $10 per week. Don't underestimate the power of these small steps. $10 per week, it is still $500 per year. And $500 per year could turn maybe, $500 in Bitcoin now, if it goes times 10 in the next 20 years, turn into $5,000 per year. So that is way more than keeping your dollars or your euros in your bank account. And that would say those $500. It doesn't increase in value because it's like uh, not going up the dollar value. It's going down. You will be able to buy less. Purchasing power, Koopkracht in the Netherlands, is dropping. You'll be able to buy less and less and less with your euros. With Bitcoin, you will be able to buy more and more and more and more. So don't underestimate baby step. Just start to buy $10, $5, whatever it is that you can afford. And every time you have some money left, buy a little bit more Bitcoin. Protect that capital against inflation. And if it comes to healthy things, yes, 10,000 steps a day is what everyone should be doing. I mostly reach like 12 to 13,000 steps a day, which is amazing. So I'm doing like 73 marathons a year. You don't see it yet, <laughs> but I'm running 70 marathons a year in total, if you count the steps. Guys, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What should I drink that I feel a little bit less uh, cold? Uh, like, what is the healthy shake that you take against a cold? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Monday and an amazing week. Bam.